not cooking. Oh, hi, Garfield. Huh? You probably noticed I'm not cooking. What? <sighs> I will in a moment. It's just that sometimes I like to come out here and look at the stars. They're so peaceful. They're so beautiful. <gasps> look! You see that? It's a shooting star! Wow! You know what a shooting star is, Garfield? It's a meteoroid that's entering the Earth's atmosphere. Great, let's do dinner. That was terrific! I wish I'd been up at the observatory watching it through their big telescope. Dinner on the table! Dinner on the table! Dinner on the table! Uh, Professor Bonkers, did you see the shooting star? Yes! A meteor from the Beta Blue Space Quadrant. Oh. Oh. Radar says it was down to the size of a gumball and it landed in the North Hills. Beta Blue, you say? Some scientists claim that meteors from Beta Blue have regressive powers. Oh. They say anything that comes into contact with one is turned back into its prehistoric form. Yes, Gertrude. I'm hiking up here in the North Hills. It's very invigorating out here, and I'm having such a good... <laughs> oh, I just found something odd, Gertrude. It's some sort of glowing rock. It's like a meteor or a... saying, Gertrude. It's very invigorating up here. Really, really brings out the caveman in you. I'm sorry I didn't cook dinner earlier last night, guys. Maybe lunch at Vito's will make up for it. Works for me. Oh, gum. I can't stand people who chew gum and just discard it and make a mess. Isn't that awful, Garfield? That's so rude. Away! Away, you get out of my restaurant, you pesky flies! All of you! Ah, Senor Arbuckle! Welcome to Vito's! Thanks, Vito! Whoa! Oh, huh? Oh. Huh? Odie, come in and join us as soon as you get that gum off your paw. My cat will have the left side of the menu. <laughs> Excellent choice. Excuse me, waiter. There's a fly in my soup. Oh, one moment, senor. And the right side of the menu. One of our most popular sides waiter, of the menu. There's a fly in my soup. Un momento, senor. Uh, please. Anything else, Garfield? Oh, yes. The back of the menu. <laughs> One of my special things. I still things. have this fly in my throat. Senor, can you not see I'm busy with another customer? Tell me, what is a big deal about a fly in your soup? Well, it's rather large. <laughs> can we make that order to go? Hey, Vito, do something! You need a swatter the size of a football field. I'm gonna call for help. This is Vito, Vito's Pizzeria. I would like to report a monster. Thank you. He'll be here in two seconds. One, two. What took them so long? What's this monster you reported? It's a fly. All right. Huh? No, officer! It's a monster fly! It's huge and it has razor sharp teeth! And it could eat more than I can! Ah. I 
I should run you all in. Huh? Huh? Next time, I'll just order a salad. I shall go prepare the left oh. side and the right side of the menu. Don't forget the back. That's the best part. Garfield, where's Odie? Huh? Huh? Odie! Whoa. Odie! Here, boy! Hmm. I wonder where Odie went. We're being drenched in doggy drool. We need help. Help! Help! Super size slurp. Help! Help! Exactly what I said. Uh huh. I see. Okay, thanks. Now it's a giant <laughs> puppy dog. <laughs> Attention, all units. We have a report from a guy in Vito's Pizzeria. He claims that there's a big puppy dog outside. Puppy dog? Sounds like this is right up my alley as a dog catcher. <laughs> Well, I'm your landlord, and your lease says you can only keep a small dog in this apartment. This is not a small dog. <laughs> oh, cry all you want. I don't care. I'm a landlord. <laughs> oh, okay, you're right. It is a small dog. Yes. He hasn't licked you yet. Garfield, we have to figure out a way to get him out of the city. Uh, maybe into the countryside. I know. Throwing a stick so he can fetch it? But how will that... I get it. Great idea! How do you lose a mutt the size of a shopping mall? All units, let the puppy dog go! He's headed up to the North Hill! Ah, uh, North Hills, huh? What's the big deal catching a little puppy dog? Come out, little puppy dog, wherever you are. Here, boy. I don't see why the police were making such a big deal. Catching dogs is easy. They're small and harmless and... Hey! 
The weatherman didn't say anything about rain today. You see him, Garfield? Maybe we could lure him with a 10 ton doggy treat. Odie! <laughs> I don't know what happened, but let's not worry about that now. Let's get him home. Hey, there's the truck of that dumb dog catcher who's always chasing us. Don't worry about him. He's too stupid to hurt you. He's a real Neanderthal. You guys just love it when we come up here to the farm and stay with my brother. I want to go home. There's the sun, the air, the great outdoors. I want to go home. What more could anyone want? TV, oh. pizza delivery, air conditioning, an internet connection, my own bed, and not being woken up at 5 a.m. by a stupid rooster. I want to go home. <laughs> I just wish Doc Boy didn't work so hard. Don't call me Doc Boy. You know what he needs? A companion. You know what I need? To go home. But I think you're working too hard. You're low too much. Doc Boy always works like that. Have I mentioned that I want to go home? I want to go home. Look, Garfield, I know you're bored. Here, take my cell phone. There are plenty of games on there and you can access the internet. Maybe it'll keep you busy. I want to go home. Don't you ever do anything but chores? Not now, John. Can't you see I'm busy? I was trying to say that maybe you need a woman oh, in your life. I don't have time for a woman in my life. I have a farm to run. Care for an omelet? You should have someone at your side. Someone to share the pleasures and trials of life. Where will I find someone? I work from dawn till dusk and I live in the middle of nowhere. Pizza? Gloria usually deliver packages and I didn't order any pizzas. No, but I have a strange hunch who did. Garfield, did you use my cell phone to order those from Vito's? Yes, and I still want to go home. So, how are you, Mr. Arbuckle? Busy. I have to slop hogs. Say, have you seen that new monster movie at the drive-in? It's still playing if you have it. Oh. Watch this. He'll blow it. I don't have time for monster movies. I have corn to pick. I told you. Oh. You want the crust? 
Mm. Too bad there aren't gonna be any. <laughs> Here, I was kidding. By the way, I still want to go home. I'm telling you, she's interested in you. Oh. She's the rush around express driver. She's interested in picking up packages and delivering packages. It's not natural to live your life alone. Life is meant to be shared. You know what the three most wonderful words are in the entire world? Let's go home. John, could we discuss this after I plow the North 40? <gasps> We need to pack. Oh, we're packed. <laughs> I don't want to stay here and watch my brother spend his life picking apples alone. <sighs> Hello? John, it's your brother. Sorry to wake you up at this hour. When you were here, you said something about the three most wonderful words in the world. But you didn't say what the words were. I love you. Well, I love you too, John. But what are the three words? Ah, I get it. Talk to you in the morning. <sighs> I love you. Yeah, that might be nice to hear once in a while. I'll get it. Of course you will. Oh, Doc Boy. I thought about what you said. You're right. I need a woman in my life. <laughs> Excellent! And the best place to find one is in the city. I had my friend Elmer drop me off, and he's going to be watching my farm for me. I'm going to stay with you until I find the love of my life. Yo! And, <laughs> and don't, don't call, call you Doc, Doc Boy, Boy, right. He said that as long as he's staying with us, he insists on cooking. Here you go, a nice healthy farm dish. Dandelion and wheatgrass soup. <laughs> ah. To grow proper rutabagas, you need well-prepared soil in a sheltered area with full sun. That's good to know. You don't mind me watching my farm programs, do you? Uh, no. Good, because there's a five-hour special on later about different kinds of shops. <laughs> we have to help that man meet someone so we can get Doc Boy out of here. <laughs> See you later, John. I'm going to town. Hi there. Gee, I seem to have lost my Nobel Peace Prize somewhere around here. Oh no. He's just gonna walk up to strangers and try to strike up a conversation? Huh? You're asking what could happen? Oh well, I have several more at home. Say, I was wondering if... <laughs> that. You can't just approach strangers like that, it's rude. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. This is promising. He's figuring out that there may be something wrong with that just fell off the tractor look. <laughs> He's going in to buy himself a new outfit. Odie, this is great. Hey, that's not a bad outfit if you want to look like Binky the Clown. Anyone out there remember Binky? Yeah, I didn't think so. 7 foot tall lady wrestler, age 70, who plays the bagpipes, seeking male any age who enjoys watching Bread Ghost Tale. Hmm, not for me. Excuse me, miss. May I hold your fine dog for you while you tie your shoelace? Why, that would be very nice of you. Here. Keep a good grip on him. He gets very upset if he sees a cat. Hey, she's actually talking to him. Oh, that's a good sign. 
Chomp the kitty. <laughs> Give me that. Hey, wait. Would you like to go out with me sometime? <sighs> Hi, Garfield. I'm not doing so well with women. I need a magic potion that will make them like me. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. This guy doesn't get it. There are no magic potions. It's just a matter of people liking each other. Hey. Huh? Try Philippe's cologne. Makes men irresistible to women. Sounds like just what I need. <laughs> that kind of thing never. One whiff of this, and the ladies will love me. What is that wonderful smell? Is it you? It's it's you. What is that fragrance? Oh, you smell so divine! Ladies, please, I'm from the farm. Don't get too excited. Huh? He's running away! Please, ladies, I'm outnumbered. There you are, you wonderful smelling creature. You're mine, all mine. Yes, I'm yours, all yours. Let's go out to dinner some night. Where would you like to go? Anywhere that I can smell you. Oh, Henry. What are you doing with my girlfriend? I'm really sorry you couldn't find your soulmate, Doc Boy. Maybe you need to give it more than one day. Huh, or maybe I'm just meant to be alone. And don't call me, you know. Gloria, what brings you here? I didn't call for a pickup. We have a date, remember? A date? Yes, you send me these gorgeous flowers with the nurse's card. Dear Gloria, please accept these modest flowers. Would you go out with me tonight to see that monster movie at the drive-in? Oh, I thought you'd never ask me. But, but I, I, well, I... Garfield, huh? did you use my cell phone to order flowers for Gloria and compose that cheesy invite? <laughs> nice work. You see, Odie, you don't have to go out and find happiness. You just have to be willing to let it find you. Whoa, that was deep, wasn't it? Oh, Garfield, almost uh, forgot. Here's your delivery. <laughs> and of course, there are other ways of finding happiness. of yours loves that cat. I'll say. Heather's always hugging Fuzz Button and cuddling her. <laughs> so, uh, Fuzz Button, how are you adjusting to life as a house pet? Don't call me Fuzz Button. I am Neverkitty, leader of the cat 
people and soon to be ruler of this world. You don't remember that episode? For those of you who missed that cartoon, let me bring you up to speed. Now I want you to pay attention. I'm only going to do this once. Liz and her niece Heather came back from a trip to Egypt with a souvenir mirror that turned out to have magical powers which my good pal Odie here discovered by accident. The mirror was actually a portal to ancient Egypt, the kingdom of Katra. Odie and I were sucked into this world to the portal, which is where we first met Fuzzbutton. I mean, Neferkitty. She tried to enslave us for all eternity so she could wage a war on mankind, giving cats total domination over people. I told her cats already dominated, but she didn't believe me. So I tricked her into following me back through the portal to John's living room, where she would have no power. Then I destroyed the mirror, leaving her stranded in this world where she was quickly adopted by Heather, who assumed she was just another stray cat. Okay, back to our story. Be afraid, Garfield. Be very afraid. Of what? You can't do anything without that magic mirror. It's broken, Fuzz Button. Hey, Liz, remember that mirror you and Heather brought back from your trip to Egypt? You mean the one that got smashed to smithereens? As good as new. All it took was a little glue and a lot of patience. The mirror. I am saved. Saved from a life as low, Fuzz Button. Okay, now I'm very afraid. I'd better go check on the lasagna. I'll lend you a hand. <laughs> Back off, Furman. <laughs> Not if I can help it. Oh, look, the kitties are playing. You're out of luck, Fuzz Button. I'm breaking it again. <laughs> what? Nice try, Fatso. The magic mirror is mine! You're forgetting oh. something. As I recall from the first episode, the magic doesn't work unless Odie licks the mirror. And Odie's not stupid enough to lick the mirror again. <laughs> Are you Odie? Odie? <laughs> okay, so he is that stupid. <laughs> the High Priestess oh. of Katra! At long last, Your Majesty. Now, my loyal subjects, bring me my magic scepter. <laughs> this is more like it. Behold, Garfield, the finger of Osiris. Garfield! Odie? I was about to. Liz? John? Hello? Are you in there? You turn him right back this second. He hasn't made my dinner yet. Annie Liz, huh? have you seen Fuzz Button? Don't call me Fuzz Button! <laughs> wow. Do you have a permit for that thing? Hang on there, boy. Looks like we're next. <laughs> the finger's magic only works on humans. Or else you and your idiot jackal would already be turned to stone. Keep an eye on these two. <laughs> and don't let that mirror out of your sight. As you wish, great Nefertiti. Now, I have a world to conquer. Every single miserable little human will be turned into a statue. <laughs> Are you really going to stare at that magic mirror all day? Great Nefertiti commanded me. You see... I think she meant the other magic mirror. Other magic mirror? I'll show you. I'm to deliver the mail to the Arbuckle House. What awful thing will happen to me today? It's good to be me again. <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong, oh great Neferkitty? I still have seven billion more humans to turn into statues. I will need a high vantage point. <laughs> See? You change channels with this magic wand, and the magic mirror takes you all over the world. That's cool. Can I try it? Oh, of course, be my guest. I'm coming to you from downtown, where more people have been mysteriously turned to stone. 
The latest victim has been identified as the only popular but, pizzeria. But how Vito. can he make pizza if he's turned into stone? Okay, now she's gone too far. Hey, I'll give you popcorn if you tell me how to cancel the power of that magic wand. You would need the toe of Anubis to do that. <gasps> Oops, I shouldn't have told you that. Then again, you'll never find it. It's hidden in our pyramid, and only Neferkitty can use it. Popcorn, please. Extra butter. Only Neferkitty, huh? Hmm. Now, I need that can of blue paint in the garage. Come on. Oh, but first, I have to make popcorn. Hmm? Not bad. And now the final touch. <laughs> you be my pet jackal. Let's cross over into their world and bring back that toe thingy, Bobby. <laughs> Look, Odie, the Temple of Cat Rock. Wow. Never Kitty, is that really you? Of course. Why do you even ask? Well, you seem a little fatter. Huh? Uh -huh. And not quite as pretty. And a lot older. Okay, quickly. Bring me that toe of Anubis. I need it to finish conquering mankind. All right. I guess it is our long-lost high priestess. <laughs> Throw her and a pet jackal in the dungeon. Huh? Yeah, but what about if we Come on, pet jackal. Run! We can't go home without the toe of Anubis, Odin. She and the jackal will spend the rest of their lives in the dungeon. Guys, guys, guys. There's been a mistake. I'm not Neferkitty, okay? I'm Garfield, look! It's Garfield. You freed us from Neferkitty when you lured her into your world. Now that she is gone, we can do all these things we weren't allowed to do. We can even take naps. <sighs> yeah, naps are great, aren't they? Hey, uh, can I have the toe of Anubis, please? I uh, have to get back to Earth and stop Neferkitty for good. Sure. Thanks, fellas. Buddy, let's go home. What's wrong? Was Nermal on some show? <laughs> Melinda broke up with Jack as he was walking her to the altar. <laughs> there, there. Don't believe everything you see in this mirror, especially politicians and ads for stuff that regrows hair. We have reports that a blue cat wearing an Egyptian headdress is responsible for turning people into stone. The city has dispatched animal control specialists to deal with it. Animal control specialists? That's us, Pete. It's a fancy word for dog catcher. Perhaps they can stop people from being turned to stone. <laughs> there she is, Pete. The blue one. Oh, yeah, she can't stop us from catching her, Al. <laughs> yes, I can. Whoa. To the rooftop. From there, I can send my energy out to the entire city and then the world. Woody, we need to get there before they turn everyone to stone. But first, let's see if this thing even works. What was that? Good heavens. Is everyone okay? That was a very bad kitty. <laughs> Peter's gonna owe me a lot of pizzas for this. You're right. There she is. I will now use my wand to send its powerful energy across the entire land, turning everyone instantly to stone. At long last, the cat people will rule the earth. <laughs> Who did that? I did! With my little toe of Anubis! The toe of Anubis? But, but that's impossible! Sorry about that, Fuzz Button! 
Don't call me! Oh, never mind. Get them, you fools! Yes, great never kitty! <laughs> yeah, I know they're coming for us, but I'm not worried. <laughs> huh? Guys, I have a job for you. Find them! Find them and destroy them! Get it! Gee, I'm really gonna miss her. I'll get you for this! You haven't seen the last of me! I will have my revenge. The world shall be mine. As for Garfield, I shall personally. There she oh. is. <laughs> no! Anything but her! <laughs> fun, fun. You've been a bad, bad kitty, but I still love you. Yes, I love, love, love my Well, little that funny. should be the last we hear from Nefer Kitty, queen of the cat people, unless. Unless they decide to do a sequel to this episode. She's a coming right up, my friends. Oh, great, huh? Pookie. It's supper time. A personal sized pizza for Signore Arbuckle. A oh. puppy dog sized pizza for Signore Puppy Dog. <laughs> and huh? a Garfield sized pizza for Signore Garfield. Oh. Hey, I distinctly recall ordering a large. Oh, oh well. Bon appetit, Pookie, my gastronomic friend. Look at that cool teddy bear, Dad. Eat your pizza before it gets cold, Jack. <sighs> oh, that was a nice, tasty pizza. On the small side, but tasty. Oh, what a shame, Pookie. You haven't touched your pizza. Well, we can't let it go to waste now, can we? <laughs> Boy, Dad, that's the neatest looking teddy bear I ever saw. I wish I had one like that. Really? You think other kids would want one? Sure. What's that, Pookie? Oh, now you're hungry. Well, I guess we'll just have to order another pizza then. Oh. Hey, I remember you. Arbuckle, mm. right? How much for the teddy bear? Uh, I'm sorry? The teddy bear. I want to buy it. Oh. What? Uh, no, you can't have Pookie. No, 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 no. Not for all the lasagna in Italy. I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. My cat uh, loves Pookie. And, huh? well, I just can't take him away because your son wants him. I don't want to keep it, Arbuckle. I'm CEO of Allwork Toys, a very large company. I want to make duplicates of it and sell them around the world. Here's how much I'll give you as an advance. Huh? Are you allowed to have that many numbers on one check? Uh! Mr. Allwork, you have a deal. Pookie is going to be a bestseller, Arbuckle. You and I are going to make a bundle. <laughs> Hear that, Pookie? I always knew you were destined for greatness. What's that? You want to celebrate with five more pizzas? Well, if you insist. <laughs> we'll have that duplicated and return to you in no time. Take good care of him. Oh! <laughs> 
Where is the original? What did you call him, Pookie? Well, we measured and studied every bit of him. <laughs> Here is the duplicate prototype we have created. He's... he's perfect! No, it isn't. Kids today have computers. They want high-tech, state-of-the-art. Does take the original back to Arbuckle? <laughs> Professor, I want you to upgrade and improve this toy. You know what to do. Indeed I do. I shall give you the teddy bear of the future. And sales of the new toy known as Robo Pookie are setting new oh, records. Really? They just went on sale this morning and already thousands have been sold. I'm going to be rich! <laughs> and I'm going to be even richer. I bought commercial time in this news broadcast. Oh, Fluffy, why do you just sit there all day and do nothing? Are your children bored with their teddy bears? I sure! Well, here comes the teddy bear of the future, Robo Pookie. Huh? Robo Pookie can sing, dance, exercise, play games, clean your room, and speak 17 yeah. languages. <laughs> Robo Pookie is the best nanny ever. And so the princess married the elevator repairman, and the roof happily ever after. Good night. I don't think you should see this. Robo Pookie is your child's very own private entertainer. You definitely shouldn't see this. Stay in here until this is all over. To be or not to be? That is the question. Yay! That's Robo Pookie, coming soon to a store near you. You're gonna love me and buy me. Whoa! This is awesome, Mr. Allwork. There was nothing wrong with the original Pookie. Does. Let him have the one I brought. Here you are, sir. Huh? Hi, I'm Robo Pookie. Who wants to play with me? <laughs> Two playmates with one brain between them. And it takes batteries. <laughs> I've had enough of this imposter. <laughs> The nerve of trying to improve on the real Pookie. Except no substitutes. Each one has a computer chip to download software updates and to communicate with other Robo Pookies. It's great, Mr. Ulwark. I can't imagine how anything could go wrong. I was just trying to help. Huh? What was that? <laughs> 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 huh? Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's 4 or 6 a.m. in New Delhi, India. It's 2.36 <laughs> <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> Would you like to think of pain? In here, he won't find us. No way! Huh? No, no, this is the real one, the good one, the one who doesn't do anything. Pick a card! Any card! Yeah, leave us alone, let us sleep. But I am your friend. I just want to help you and entertain you. <gasps> he looks just like me. Huh? He is. I salute you, a worthy forebear. I kiss <gasps> your feet in respect. I've been trying to get people to treat me like that for years. I will follow the wishes of the grand forebear. 
great. The grand forebear says he wants you to let us get some sleep. As you wish. I shall remain here and bask in the greatness of the grand forebear. Fine. You stay there and bask while we go back to bed. I cannot keep your glory all to myself. Attention, fellow Robopokies. I have found the grand forebear. Repeat. I have found the grand forebear. Robopookies of the world, use your global positioning systems to track the location of my transmission! Hmm. Huh? Uh, it's 5 a.m. Who's ringing the doorbell at this hour? We are here to pay our respects to the Grand Forebear! We are here to pay our respects to the Grand Forebear! I command you all to follow me and the handsome cat. Ah. Repeat, follow me and the handsome cat. Do you understand? Yes, a glorious morning! I got a call that a lot of Robo Pookies were being returned to my factory. But Dad, don't toys you make get returned all the time? Yes, but usually they don't march in by themselves. <laughs> They're all coming back! Every one of them! Every one of them that we made and sold, I'm gonna have to give refunds on every one of them. Does that mean I'm not rich? You'll be lucky if you can afford a yo-yo. Huh? I, I should <laughs> never have gotten into this pookie business. I like mine. That's the prototype we made, the one that didn't do anything. Yeah, I'm glad I have it. Why, what do you do with it? I don't know, just love it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I made one kid happy. And I guess I realized what I love about Pookie. He's a lot like me. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. Someone had better have my breakfast lasagna ready if someone knows what's good for someone. I've decided that this is gonna be a great day. Hiya, Garfield! <laughs> well, so much for my great day. Huh? Oh, Garfield, Nermal's going to spend the entire summer with us. Won't that be fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> The whole summer? Yep. 
I've been saving this idea up for an emergency. And if Nermal staying all summer isn't an emergency, I don't know what it is. Nermal, what are you doing in here, eating oatmeal raisin cookies? Why aren't you out winning the contest? Contest? What contest? The contest to find the most awesomely adorable kitten in the world. Well, hi, that's me. <laughs> Why wasn't I notified? Where is this contest? In the backyard. Quick, you may still have time to walk off with the first prize. Woohoo! Thanks, Garfield. <laughs> I haven't won a trophy in over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Be happy, Nermal. I'm sending you for Chinese food. Real, authentic Chinese food. Now, where's that ceiling tape? <laughs> Must have left it in the house. Stay right where you are, Nermal. Hey, this isn't <laughs> funny, Garfield. Sure, I'll throw the ball for you, boy. Uh, but first, your dog tag keeps coming off your collar. I'll put it back on for now, but I'm going to have to fix that better when I get a moment. Okay, here we go, boy. Putting on a little extra weight, are you, Nermal? And don't forget to send a postcard. <laughs> Not, I repeat, funny, is it, Odie? Ah, <sighs> just in time for my afternoon nap. Garfield, have you seen Odie? <sighs> well, he's probably chasing his own tail or drinking out of the toilet. Hmm, this is odd. He seems to have disappeared. I threw his ball for him a few minutes ago and he ran right out the back door after it. Hmm. Oh well. I'm sure he'll turn up. Hmm. <laughs> out the back door? <gasps> no wonder that box was so heavy. <laughs> Stop! There may be someone in that box I don't want shipped to China. Feeling grumpy or feeling sad? Assume this song if you feel bad. Stand up and sing along. Song. You only have to move around, uh -huh. jump and dance. Should be in Shanghai by noon. Soon, the golden cat shall be yours. <sighs> I should have no trouble finding that box with Normal and Odie in it. Uh, uh, oh. I will. <gasps> Odie, Normal, where are you? <clears throat> well, where's here? <sighs> Not in here. Not in here. Also not in here, but there are cookies. Mm. This is not a good place for me to be. Please, power off all electronic devices in preparation for takeoff. No, 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 no. I can't fly somewhere. I don't have a, I don't have a seat belt. I don't even have a magazine to read. Garfield? Odie? Anybody? Oh, last one. Wouldn't you know it? Oh. Huh? I'm happy to see you, too. I'm not happy to see you. You're in a lot of trouble, Garfield. Hey, tell me something I don't already know. So, would you ship me to Abu Dhabi again? No, Nermal, I gave that up. Nope, we're on our way to China. Oh. 
Uh -huh. Oh, that's better. That's China. Garfield? Odie? Anybody? Hey guys, wake up. We've landed. <laughs> Where's Nermal? I know it's not Nermal, but it's probably smarter than he is. Nermal, wake up! And people say I like to sleep. Well, here we are, Odie. Welcome to China. Pets should not be loose in the airport. Come on, Odie. We better grab Nerbal and get out of here. Hey, don't worry. I know this is it. Stop them, somebody! Stop that cat and dog! Excuse me, that cat and dog? Oh, they got away from me. I believe this came out the dog's collar. It's a pet license. Say bullying no way. We need respect. Okay, Sleeping Beauty, rise and shine. No, no, no. I must have grabbed the wrong box. <sighs> Odie, this is a disaster. We're 10,000 miles from home. We don't have any food. John doesn't know where we are. We don't have any food. Did I mention we don't have any food? <laughs> then again, we have lost Nermo. Maybe we could trade this odd statue for some lasagna. <laughs> Boy, I hope they have lasagna in this country, especially since we may be here for the rest of our lives. about time, Voldo. It is, Miss Bella. Freshly stolen from the National Museum. The golden cat statue better be in the box or everyone is going to pay dearly. <laughs> this doesn't look like a golden cat to me. Uh, uh, well, it... it doesn't even look like a real statue. Ouch. Where is my golden cat? Well, I don't have a clue. But who needs a statue when you have the genuine cutest kitten in the whole world? There must have been some kind of mix-up at the airport. I am not a happy Voldo. And do you know what I do when I am not happy? Oh, I hope it doesn't involve singing. I sing! I was afraid that you would say that. <laughs> Just make it stop. I am sure that cat knows something. Siam, Tiam, come here to play with your new friend. <laughs> I have to go out for an hour, Dingbat. Shouldn't you be studying instead of helping me here in the restaurant? I have already done my homework, Uncle Tang. And I know you could do with an extra hand. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, take care of any hungry mouths who come by. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. Please go away. Uncle Tang does not want me to feed stray animals. <laughs> Come on, guys. You are going to get me in trouble if my uncle sees you here. Quick, pup. Sad eye routine, number 1685. <laughs> oh, you like Chinese noodles, huh? 
Did you know pasta was invented in China? Gee, I thought you guys spent the whole day eating rice and practicing kung fu. <laughs> Is that supposed to be kung fu? <laughs> Still hungry, huh? I wish I could take you to this all-you-can-eat dim sum place down the street. Sounds like a plan. But huh? that is all I have. So sorry. <laughs> wow. This looks expensive. Do you want to sell it? Is that the idea? <laughs> there is an antique store two blocks away. Maybe that man there would give you a good price for it. They can't be concerned about normal at a time like this. There's all you can eat dim sum down the street. Basket's all packed. Now, where again is this forest we're going to? I have a map. It's a remote area, and nobody ever takes care of the animals up there or feeds them. <laughs> you love feeding animals, don't you? Uh, look who's talking. Speaking of which, where are... Oh, Odie's watching a fairy tale on TV, and Garfield's upstairs asleep. Have you vanquished the evil witch in the purple hole? The huh? You should be waking up any minute now. What a strange dream. I was eating linguine and clams. Usually on Tuesdays, I dream about eating fettuccine and clams. <gasps> Let's see what time it is. Oh, no. I'm missing my favorite show. <laughs> oh, I'm the kingdom to find his true love. <laughs> Thanks, Odie. I almost missed Eddie Gourmand. Today, he's going to take a look at spaghetti and meatballs. Aww. Welcome to my show, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. On today's show, we're going to look at spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? This is the best show on television, apart from mine, of course. Oh. Oh. I've gained three pounds just watching it so far. Odie, you'd rather watch some fairy tale than look at spaghetti and meatballs? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> For the of you who just joined us. We'll be looking at this plate of spaghetti and meatballs for an entire hour! <laughs> oh, and tomorrow is Chinese food day. We'll be looking at mugu gai <laughs> shrimp and oyster sauce, <sighs> chicken chow mein! <laughs> Fairy tales are silly. I can make up a better story than this. <laughs> Liz and I are leaving. We'll be back late. Enjoy yourself, guys. We will. And don't get into any trouble. We will. You want me to read you a fairy tale? I have important things to do. Naps. More naps. Naps during other naps. Huh? Oh. 
Uh, okay, but wait here a moment. <laughs> oh. Ah, ham and cheese on sourdough with brown mustard. That picnic basket looked heavy. It seemed lighter just now. About the weight of a ham and cheese on sourdough with brown mustard. Ah, this one will do. Huh? 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 All right, let's see. Once upon a time, I've read this story. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, once upon a time, there was an extremely handsome cat. You want to know how handsome this cat was? <laughs> that handsome. Me. It's me. Who is the one they all appreciate? Me. Yes, me. Who is the slyest? Who's on the rise? As you can see, me. Still me. Who is the highest? Who takes the prize? Me. Not you. Me. Who wins the test? Above the rest. By now you guessed, you're impressed, and I'm so blessed! I must suggest it's me. The very best is me. He lived a quiet but happy life within the castle. Sometimes he would eat. And sometimes he would sleep. And sometimes he would eat and sleep. <laughs> Saves time. The magnificent cat's life was good, except for three problems. One was an extremely dim-witted dog that was always asking him to throw a stick so it could be fetched. <laughs> That's what it says here. You think I'm just making this all up? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, let's move on. Where was I? Oh yes, uh, asking him to throw a stick so it could be fetched. <sighs> oh. All right, all right, just to be rid of you. For those of you who don't know, this is called a catapult. Catapult is an ancient weapon invented by Greek soldiers to hurl large boulders at their enemies. But it's even handier for this. <laughs> See you sometime around Halloween. So the dog with the long tongue was one of his problems. Another was the prince's twin nieces. There he is! There is the kitty cat! Oh no! Hey, kitty cat! I want to play with you! Bye! Where are you? I am so doomed. Let's play Let's your dress up. Let's no, do it, Let's do it. Stop. We'll Call the palace up. guard. Oh, Call the royal babysitter. Call I the fashion really police. Need the yeah. What's the They'll smell so sweet. They'll look gorgeous. The worst part is I didn't even look good in this color. <laughs> <sighs> and the cat's third problem was his master's problem. Prince John had to find a bride, and he needed one soon. But I do not want to marry any of the women at the royal ball last night. Look, I'm just the royal food taster around here, but I know this. Royal law says that if you don't marry by your 21st birthday, the next in line becomes king. Oh. And you know who the next in line is. Huh? Next in line was the royal viceroy. 
And he was not a nice man at all. All right, attention, peasants. When I take charge, I'll be instituting some new taxes. Let's see. Tax on inhaling, tax on exhaling, tax on holding your breath, tax on not breathing at all. I protest these taxes! Tax on protesting these taxes. A tax on tying your shoes. A tax on wearing loafers. What if we go barefoot? Uh, a tax on going barefoot. Thank you. All right, a tax on thumbtacks. A tax on putting ketchup on a cheese sandwich. <sighs> His greed will destroy this kingdom. Which is why you need to find a bride. And soon, like tomorrow. <sighs> Then marry I shall, even if I have to marry the next woman who walks through that door. <gasps> oh. huh? Huh? Well, maybe I could keep looking for a little longer. You know, he doesn't look good in that color. He had been dining with every available maiden in the kingdom and was down to the last three. People say you gotta help humanity. I say, what has humanity ever done for me? <laughs> Strike one. Me 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 and only me. Must you speak all evening about yourself? You are right, Prince John. Let us speak about you now. What do you think of me? Strike two. So, uh, uh, tell me a little about yourself. Uh, I'd like to get to know you. Uh, Strike three. She's out. Boy, can you imagine trying to live with someone like that? It was about then that the not all that smart dog finally got back with a stick. Oh, hi. Well, it looks like the prince will never find a bride. The evil viceroy will be our new king. Bad for the kingdom, but I don't care that much. Nothing that evil, power-mad guy does will affect me. Attacks on watching cartoon shows. Attacks on blinking. Attacks on dancing with a monkey. See, that doesn't affect me. Attacks on vigorous exercise. See, that really doesn't affect me. Attacks on eating pasta, tomato sauce, or anything that contains cheese. See, none of these things affect me. <gasps> Attacks on pasta? No, 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 no. Unfair. Uh, tax Brussels sprouts. Tax health food. Tax anything with yogurt in it. Just don't tax lasagna. Pop, we have to stop that man. We have to help Prince John find a wife. So the brilliant cat and the not brilliant dog were determined to... Oh, wait. Time for a burrito break. Wait here. And don't you go anywhere either. I'll be back in one burrito. doesn't understand how much work it is to run a farm. Neither do I. What's so hard? Your farmhands plow the fields, 
All you have to do is feed the animals. Do you know what it's like to feed all those hungry mouths? Doc Boy, I feed Garfield and Odie. Well, you got a point there. And don't call me Doc Boy. Say, where is Garfield? Come on, come on. Drive me back to civilization. Garfield doesn't like it here on the farm. Anyway, I still say feeding animals is easy. And I still say you don't know what you're talking about. And I still say, let's go home! He works much harder than you think, John. And I still think you need to take a vacation. Well, one of these days, I'd better get Garfield home before... Here's your host, Garfield! Yoo-hoo! Your emergency order! Pizza! All right, all right. We'll go home. Wait. Huh? I have some fighter pilots airlifting pastrami sandwiches. Come back Bye. soon. See you later. So long now. Now about that vacation. Oh. But who'd take care of the cows and the horse and the chickens and... You can find someone. You're right. I can, and I know who. Visiting my brother yesterday was fun. No cable TV. Oh, that farm of his is so cool. Roosters at crow at 5 a.m. And the air smells so great. If you like the smell of cow. Huh? Oh, I wonder who this is. Mm. <laughs> Doc Boy, Gloria. Hello, John. And don't call him Doc Boy. Oh. Doc Boy and Gloria. See? Even they couldn't stand it out on that farm. So I finally persuaded him to take a vacation. And I don't even know where we're going or when we'll be back. Hey, why don't we visit that relative of yours you told me about? Huh. Which one? Her name was Aunt something? Yeah, I mentioned her. Don't worry, folks. She's not in this episode. It's safe to watch. So, who's going to take care of all your animals while you're away? Someone who said he thought it would be easy. Me? Oh, no. I don't have time to go up to your farmyard. Who said anything about taking care of them in my farmyard? <laughs> I don't like the nearness of that move. Couldn't have put it any better myself. Doc Boy? Doc Boy? We left plenty of food and audio instructions on how to feed them. We'll see you when we get back from our vacation. <laughs> Whenever that is. <laughs> and don't call me Doc Boy. In a situation like this, there's only one thing to do. You with me, Odie? Tell until the animals are gone. Oh no! You're not running out on this. You're going to stay and help me take care of those animals until Dog Boy and Gloria get back. Whenever that is. We'll just keep the animals in the backyard. It won't be so bad. Unless, of course, it starts to rain. Oh. <sighs> you had to say that, didn't you? Come on, let's get them inside. The weird part is, this is the cleanest this house has been in months. I don't think they left us nearly enough food. I'm going to run out and get some more before the store closes. Here, my brother left this CD called How to Feed Farm Animals. Play it and do as it says while I'm gone. If you don't feed them, I don't feed you. Good. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, let's see what this thing says. Hello, welcome to How to Feed Farm Animals. Lesson one, chickens. Spread chicken feed evenly on ground. All right, I'll try that. Supper time. Get your delicious chicken feed right here. Come on, what are you waiting for? Would you eat that? Probably. There's not a lot I won't eat. Try it. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. Woo. We got to get you something better than that. Yeah. Why do you have to do that? Because I just love to go It's in my soul. It's in my heart. Yeah, but it's also in my ears. I can't help myself. I have to go. Well, then I'll help you. Step right in here. Okay, let's see what's next. Feeding goats. Many people think goats eat tin can. This is not true. They merely like to lick the glue that is often used to put a label on a tin can. Oh, that's so good to know, Mr. Voice. Here, I know you don't really eat tin cans, but... What was in that when it was full? Spaghetti, I think. Oh, great. You get the spaghetti, I get the empty can. Well, now, wait a minute. Hey, you dropped something on the ground behind you. Huh? I don't see anything. We've got to get you some better food, too. Feeding horses. Horses eat hay. Odie, bring the hay in here. <laughs> hey, it's your hay. I'm not eating that. You know what hay tastes like. It's dry. It's tasteless. It's, it's... Like John's meatloaf? Well, probably not that bad. Wait here. <laughs> Here, there's no food on earth that can't be made edible with enough ketchup. <laughs> bon appetit. Wow. <laughs> My mistake. This isn't ketchup. It's ultra-powerful hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but I'll make it up to you. I'm going to give you guys some real food. Let's see, yesterday's macaroni, leftover Chinese food. So much better than Jim Cans. Yeah, this is so much better than what Dog Boy features on the horn. We're never gonna leave this house. <laughs> oh no, we can't keep them here, Odie. It's time to take drastic steps. More drastic than that. More drastic than that. Even more drastic than that. <laughs> Oh, if there are any small children watching, they should look away from the screen. This could be really scary. I know I said Aunt Ivy wasn't in this episode. I lied. John! John! I got your email inviting me to stay with you until Christmas after next. This is it. This place looks like a barnyard. Even worse, it smells like a barnyard. Look at the feathers on that chicken. Look at the giblets on that turkey. Get that cow out of here. I'm lactose intolerant. Get that sheep out of here. I don't like wool. Tell that rooster if he doesn't shut up, he won't like what I'll fucking do to him. But it's supposed to be our vacation. And it will be. But I'm worried about how my brother will take care of the animals. I just want to check and make sure they're okay. Oh, my animals! They're all running away! Come back! Come back! I'll take you all back to the farm! <laughs> problem solved. Oh, you're wondering about the bigger problem. The Aunt Ivy problem. I'm not staying in this Don't house worry. another minute. It smells like a barnyard and all the fur and feathers are... <laughs> 
Chicken up my allergies. I'm gonna stay in the most expensive hotel in town and charge it to John. Other problem solved. Now I have just one more thing to do. Remember the CD? Mm -hmm. I have to go online and find the guy who makes them. I have an idea. I don't know how you did it, Garfield. Doc Boy called and said he and all his animals are home safe on their farm, and he'll find a sitter for them before he takes a vacation. Good. Okay, here. Listen to this. The CD player? Something on here you want me to listen to? <laughs> Hello. Welcome to How to Feed Garfield Cat. Lesson mm -hmm. one, breakfast. <gasps> Garfield enjoys a modest breakfast, including waffles oh, with syrup, fresh berries, hot coffee with sugar, cream, and more sugar, buttermilk pancakes, sausage patties, sausage drinks, eggs fried, eggs scrambled, eggs poached on top of other eggs, lasagna, cold cereal, hot cereal, butter toast, bacon, more bacon, lots more bacon. You gotta admit. <laughs> I'm a duck. Yep, I'm a duck, and you're probably wondering how I became a duck. It happened yesterday, and it started in this house just down the block. I knew someday my handsome prince would come and rescue me. And I knew someday I would find the lovely princess to be my bride. True love will always find a way. <sighs> and you're the man I have waited my entire life. Winona, are you watching fairy tales again? No, I, I was studying my magic spells. Don't lie to me, young lady. You were watching fairy tales again. I warn you, they'll give you bad dreams. <sighs> fairy tales aren't scary, Auntie. They are if you're a witch. Have you seen what they do to witches in fairy tales? They burn us, they melt us, <gasps> and pretty children are always shoving us into ovens. I can't believe they show that stuff to kids. No, no, I don't want to hear this. Well, study your spells, and don't let me catch you watching or believing in fairy tales again. <laughs> I will find somebody someday, won't I? Somebody who thinks I'm beautiful and who really wants to love me. That really does happen, doesn't it? Never more. Ah! And while all that was going on in our neighborhood, we were out in farm country. And you know how much I love that. <sighs> I want to go home. <laughs> Gloria's making lasagna for dinner? Mm-hmm. Then I want to go home. You and Gloria seem very happy. Oh, we are, John. We are. Ever since we started dating, he seems happier and healthier. That's how I feel. And wait till you taste the dinner Gloria's making. Oh, I have to check on my lasagna. I found myself a great little lady, John. And don't call me Doc Boy. I haven't called you Doc Boy yet. You will. Well, this was going on when Nona was studying spells. Oh, I almost forgot. In case you missed the earlier episode, when Nona had a crush on John, she tried to marry him, but fortunately, we stopped it in time so John could be with Liz. But she still had a crush on John and couldn't resist sneaking a peek at what he was doing. <laughs> oh, there he is. She makes great lasagna. It won't matter. When Garfield's around and they serve lasagna, I never seem to get any. John Arbuckle is so dreamy. 
I wonder who that guy he's talking to is. Don't worry, John. You're my brother. I'll make sure you His don't... His brother! Another Arbuckle! Just don't call me Doc Boy. I didn't know John had a brother. And he's just as dreamy. Did you hear that bird? I found my handsome prince at last. Nevermore. <laughs> and off she went to bag herself her very own Arbuckle. <laughs> She had to laugh down, but she still wasn't great on her spells. <laughs> I have one more cow to milk. I'll be back before dinner is served. And don't call me Doc Boy. I have it! Yet! Better get your place at the table, Garfield. You don't want to be late. I've never been late for lasagna, and I don't intend to start now. Oh, and I uh, still want to go home. <laughs> Hello, my name is Winona, and I'm going to be your bride. Oh, that's nice. John's brother can be slow. About a gallon and a half later. My bride? Did you say you were going to be my bride? You can't say no to me. Yes, I can. Watch this. No, I said no to you. Oh, he's even oh. got a sense of humor. It goes with my sense of survival. <laughs> if he wants to play hard to get, I can play along. Room. I'll tell you why I want to go home, Odie. It's boring here on the farm. Nothing ever happens. Ah! Ah! Help! Help! Don't fight it, Mr. Arbuckle! We were made for each other! Hey, I know who that is. That's Mrs. Cauldron's niece. What's all this noise about? Duck Boy, are you all right? I'm being chased by a witch who wants to marry me. Marry him? Yeah, and I knew you'd call me Dog Boy. Oh. I can't see who these people are, but I better cast some spells so they don't interfere. Like I said, Winona wasn't the greatest witch, <laughs> but she did have a copy of Magic Spells for Dummies. <laughs> Alakaz. Oh. She turned John into a squirrel. I don't know what's happening <laughs> here. Oh. <laughs> She turned me into a duck. Hey, you can't do this to my friends. They're all... <laughs> and she turned Odie into a... a duck? I guess I should have picked some other kind of animal. Oh, well. Finally, she swooped up ah. Duck Boy and carried him off. Ah. Let's go get married, Duck Boy. Help! And don't call me Duck Boy. John went off looking for nuts. But Gloria stuck around to panic. Oh, I don't want to be a horse. I want to be Dad's wife. Well, unless we think of something, that job is about to be filled. The only person who can stop her is her aunt, Mrs. Cauldron. You're right. None of us can drive, but we do have transportation. Huh? Hello, Gloria! Don't worry, Odie. Mrs. Cauldron will know what to do. We made it to Mrs. Cauldron's in no time. It was easy for her to change Gloria back to Gloria. Ella Kazak! Dearie, are you all right? Do you know where you are? How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> then, cast a long-range spell to turn John back into John. Alakazat! <laughs> but changing me back to me proved to be more difficult. Duck into cat. Duck into cat. I can't seem to find it. Here's Duck at the Aardvark. Oh, you wouldn't want it. No, I didn't think so. Well, the duck spell will wear off. 
Eventually. We may not have much time. I know where she must have taken them. I'll take us there. This will be a great time to try out my new tricycle broom. In no time at all, we were airborne. <laughs> and in even less time than that, we were nearing the Tower of Witchery. This is where witches go to marry or to get their warts polished. Do you, Winona, take this man to be your lovely wedded warlock? For sure. And do you take this woman to be your lovely wedded witch? Will it matter if I say no? Not in the slightest. I didn't think so. And don't call me Doc Boy. I now pronounce you. Wait! Stop the <gasps> ceremony! Oh no, not again. Auntie! With Nona, you bad little girl. <laughs> I just wanted someone to marry me. Is there anything <laughs> wrong with that? If he doesn't want to, <laughs> plenty. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm never gonna find anyone. Winona, you're young. And by the time I find someone, I'll be your age! <laughs> hey, give the kid a break. She's got to stop believing in fairy tales. Why? Because they don't come true. I'm 300 years old, and I've never seen a fairy tale come true. Did you ever believe in them? Well... No. Well, maybe that's why. But Winona does. She believes in true love and happy endings. Oh, those things don't happen in real life. They might if you let them happen. And in case you haven't noticed, you're a witch and I'm a talking cat who got turned into a duck? <coughs> this is not real life. Hello? Oh, yeah. Give your niece a break and... That's not a bad idea. Now that's what I call a handsome prince. It's no use. I guess some of us weren't meant to ever find true love. We all feel that way. Until we do. <gasps> I always knew you were coming! I just didn't think you'd ever show up. May I have the honor of this dance? Totally. <laughs> oh. Well, that's pretty much the happy ending of it all. Winona found her prince, Gloria and Doc Boy went home, and Mrs. Calden wiped out everyone's memory of what happened. Everyone except me, of course. Someone had to narrate this episode. Oh, and she assures me the stuck thing, it's going to wear off in a couple of days, or weeks, or sometime. In the meantime, I've decided to enjoy it. Huh? Mm. I've always wanted to fly south for the winter. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> We can stop off for pizza. Vito's has a discount for ducks. Just a perfect afternoon, Odie. 
John's away, the weather's fine, I have a lemonade and a medium-sized sandwich, and I can just lie here and do something I really enjoy. Watch someone else exercise. One, two, one, two, feet apart! One, two, faster men! One, two, one, two! Couldn't you take a break, please? Like until next August? Stop goofing off, Squeak! Now drop and give me 20! <laughs> You could go a little easier on them, Biff. I've got to get them in shape so they can protect themselves, Emily. What if a cat came into the yard? Well, there is a cat in the yard. I don't mean Garfield. Garfield's our friend. <laughs> uh, I don't mean Garfield either. I mean him. <laughs> This is fun to watch, too. Okay, Biff, it's showtime. Oh, what have we here? Hey, Mouse, aren't you afraid of me? Nice going, Biff. We probably won't see Bruno again until this episode's in reruns in a few months. And now to celebrate your impressive feat, I think I'll go eat something. Oh, Biff, you're the greatest. Yeah, the greatest. I don't know what we'd do without you around. Probably have to count on Garfield to protect us. That overweight, huh? out-of-shape cat? Oh. Me? Exercise? I think you need to give your brain a workout. You need to get fit, Cat, huh? and I'm gonna see that you do. <laughs> There's ice cream in that refrigerator. Uh, you saw what I did to that other cat. Huh? <laughs> Who needs ice cream? It's only delicious and wonderful. I'll have 20 cookies instead. <laughs> no cookies either. You're gonna exercise. Come on! All right, all right. I'll exercise. I've exercised. I'll do another one, uh, let's say next summer. Maybe autumn, or maybe even winter. Garfield, follow me! <laughs> Running is the best way to lose fat. Keep your pace and your heartbeat up, and you'll keep your weight down. <laughs> After we run a few miles, we'll do about an hour of push ups. Then there's weight training and gymnastics and aerobics. And I know you're not happy about not eating, so we'll reward you with a snack. Half a radish. You're too generous. Mm. And then more aerobics and chin-ups, and then... Oh! Oh! Uh. Uh. Huh? Twice as hard! Now you have to work out! Fat cat! I don't know how much of this good health I can survive. Squeak! Doesn't that friend of yours know the joys of fattening food? Well, only when he's miserable. Miserable? Like I am now? Yeah, when he gets depressed, he eats like you do. More even. I saw it once when he broke up with his girlfriend, Emily. Hmm. You could go a little easier on Garfield. He's flabby. He's unfit. He calls for drastic measures. Biff, you're so wonderful most of the time. Give him a little rest and let him have some of his lasagna. They're having a fight. Let's see if I can make it worse. No, Garfield will exercise. I'm helping, not hurting him. <coughs> I'm ready for more exercise, Biff. <coughs> I do my sit-ups in the hospital bed. Oh. oh, Biff, this is terrible. I never want to see you again. 
<laughs> but Emily! I'm going to go find some other house to live under. <coughs> See, she left you. How does that make you feel, Bifford? Hungry. I think I'll spend the evening staring mindlessly at the TV and eating unhealthy food. <sighs> hey, Bifford, want to get out of my chair and do a few laps around the block? Mm, no. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Emily. So I got out of having to exercise, but now I have an even bigger problem. Biff is in my chair. <laughs> and he's eaten every scrap of food in the house. That is my job. Ugh, I'm just waiting for something else to go wrong. <laughs> Sounds like that's it. Oh, and I must have you. <laughs> and you look delicious. <laughs> Bruno, you put those mice down and get out of this yard right now. Who's gonna make me? Someone other than me. <laughs> it's no use, dog. You won't stop me. <laughs> Biff, you're needed. Bruno's back and he's grabbing up all the mice. Come on! Uh, well, I'll do what I can. Uh, hurry! I am hurrying! Uh, I've had about enough of this! I think I'll barbecue tonight. <laughs> oh, my friend! The only one who can save them is Biff! Biff's useless. You know how he's acting? No, how is he acting? A lot like me. The only way to get him back is to reunite him with his lady friend. Emily? Hmm? She moved to under some other house somewhere. Odie, put that damp nose of yours to work. Find Emily the mouse. <laughs> You think you found your boy? <laughs> oh, oh, it's you, Garfield. I thought it was that big, nasty cat. That big, nasty cat's about to barbecue all your friends. This is awful. Can't Biff do something? Biff's not Biff since you left. He really misses you. Don't you miss him? Well, sort of. Sort of means you do. Come on, there's not much time. You gotta snap out of it, Biff. Our pals are in terrible danger. <sighs> what can I do? I'm fat and out of shape. I, I'm just no good. I am... Emily! Hey, the big reunion scene can wait. We have mice to save. Biff, you look so, so... Like me. But now that I got you back, I can go get me back. Wait here. Huh? You got your own physique back so quick! <laughs> yeah, it only took one 15-second montage sequence. Where is this place Bruno hangs out? Down here, by the railroad tracks. <laughs> Charcoal's almost ready. <laughs> Garfield, do something! All right, 
I have one of my typically brilliant plans. Odie, you run to the other side and distract Bruno. Squeak, you stay here and bang on a drum. I'll disguise myself as a potato farmer and... I have a better idea! Thanks to Garfield. I'm sorry I worked you so hard. Oh, that's okay. I'm gonna take your advice, Biff. I'm gonna start a new exercise program. Hey, Squeak, will you help me with it? Uh, hey, uh, sure. Uh, whatever it is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You call eating lasagna exercise? Sure. I'm using a very heavy fork. Squeak. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.